Okay. Uh, yesterday we were working on some of these rotational equilibrium problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think we got through number six. Is that true? Mm -hmm. But we didn't start number seven. No, we started. Okay. So let's start number seven today. Because this one's pretty similar to one that I put on the test. So. Okay. All right. Let me get that, and then let me get this picture here. Does it take up like a lot of room? Uh, no, the picture is kind of big, but the actual problem itself doesn't take up that much room. So. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we got this turtle who's walking along this board. And it says, supposed to walk along the board, it's taking a swimming pool. So the board has a mass of 600 kilograms, it's only 15, it's 15 meters long, but only 5 meters of it hangs over the edge. How far out can the turtle walk before it begins to fall in? Okay, so what are we looking for? Um, distance. Definitely a distance, right? So we'll call that D of G because the turtle's name is Goliath. So, because he's a giant Galapagos turtle, tortoise, so. All right, so things we know, right? Um, the mass. So I gave us the mass of the turtle, right? Or the tortoise, okay. Then, it gave us the mass of the board, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it tells us something else about, it tells us a couple of things about the board, right? Um, it's 15 minutes long, but yeah. five. Okay, so we know that like, this is 15, right? Mm -hmm. But then this is only five. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to save the rest of this stuff here. And it says how far out from the edge can the, tortoise walk before the board begins to rotate. So just before the board begins to rotate, right, we have this going on. Because it's in, ro it's in rotational equilibrium, right? Yeah. Okay. So here's how this problem is a little bit different than the problem from before. Okay? First, we can do forces. Okay? So we have gravity acting on Goliath here. And we can figure out how much that is, right? Yeah. Do you have your calculator? Mm -hmm. Just because I don't. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 3,531. 3,531. Yeah. All right. But then there's another force of gravity, right? We talked about yesterday that gravity is, act, gravity is actually acting on this board, right? And where is gravity going to act on this board? Perpendicular? Perpendicular, definitely, but where can we draw the arrow for gravity? Oh, like near the, like when it's on the swing to like clock. Okay, now we're actually going to draw something there. But if we look at the actual gravity that's acting on this board, Right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday when we drew the meter stick, we drew gravity acting on that too, right? Yeah. But where was gravity acting on the meter stick? The actual gravity from the meter oh, stick. Oh, it was acting on like the side. No, those were the things that were hanging off the meter stick. Oh, right? okay. But the, I think we drew a force that was like right in the middle, right? Yeah. But what did we say about that force? Did we have to include it? Was it was canceled. Right. Because it went through the rotation. Right. Gravity is still going to act on the middle of this board. So we'll still have to draw this in. Okay? And we'll just call this f of b. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Yeah. And we can calculate how much that is, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. 
But the thing that makes this problem different is, is this board going to rotate around the middle in this case? No. No. That our point of rotation now is, like, right there, right? Yeah. Because that's the point that it's going to spin around. Yeah. So whereas yesterday, when we just canceled out that force of gravity in the torque equation because it passed through the middle, now we can't do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now, when we go to calculate this net torque over here, right, we have a torque coming from Goliath, and we have a torque that's coming just from the gravity that's acting on the board. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then those two together will equal zero. So if we look at rotation, right, which way is the um, board going to rotate because of what Goliath is doing to it? Uh, Counterclockwise, counter right? So we can call that one negative, right? Mm -hmm. And then we said, like, we look at the actual gravity of the board, that would cause a rotation in which way? Uh, clock clock clockwise. clockwise, right? So we can call that one, we can keep that one positive. So when we go to break this down, we know that torque is FD sine theta, right? Mm -hmm. So there's our torque formula for Goliath. And then this will be the torque formula for gravity actually acting on the board itself. And those two together equal zero. Okay? Okay. So one thing before we start plugging numbers in, right? We know this, mm -hmm. right? We know this. We're looking for this. What's theta going to be in this uh, case? 90. Just going to be 90 like it was yesterday, right? Because that angle between the board and Goliath is 90, and then this angle between the board, gravity and the board itself is 90. So when we said sine of 90 is equal to what? 1. 1. So that can just sort of cancel out of that equation, right? This is the tricky part here, this one, right? Because we said that what does D stand for in that equation? Like distance. Distance from um, the pivotal point. Right. So what's D for that board going to be? For the gravity for the acting board on the board. For the, nope. Oh, like less. Definitely going to be less. So it's like. Where did we say that gravity acts on things? In the middle. In the middle. Oh, so you divide by two. So. so Okay, so this is 7.5, right? Yeah. Okay, but the D in this formula isn't the it's distance like from... Really right, so what's that going to be? Uh, 7.5, 2.5. Because here, right, we said that this was 5, right? Uh -huh. So that means that that little yeah. section right Ten. in there... Well, like, uh, yeah. 50 minus five yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so that means that this is going to be 2.5 meters. Because that D in that formula is always the distance from the rotation point. Okay. Yeah. And now we should have everything that we need to start plugging in things to uh, solve. We don't really have to write like the sign theta, right? Oh, and that's a distance. So you, have to, you don't have to do anything like weird. Like we did yesterday, like you didn't solve for the distance. No, no, you just solve for distance, right? Yeah. So you should just be able to solve for this one, one step, right? Okay. Did you get 4.2? Cool. All right, so there's that one. And then the other one that I wanted to do was one pretty similar to that one. So here, right, let's take a look at number eight. First, put that there, and then I'm going 
grab this picture, even though it's not the best picture, it doesn't show up the best, you have 